Hello, welcome to Anita the Pedagogue channel. Today we continue with our literature lessons. We want to look at a poetry analysis. The poem we are looking at today is titled Makola. Let's take a look at our lesson objectives for today. We will look at a biography of the poet Teresa Enin. We will take a look at the title, the structure of the poem, some characters in the poem, its line-by-line -line analysis, some literary devices in the, the themes, we will do a quick recap and I will introduce to you some likely examination questions. Let's take a look at a biography of the poet Teresa Enin. She is a lecturer from the University of Cape Coast, Ghana. She is a Fulbright scholar with a PhD in African Literature and Languages from University of Wisconsin-Madison. She has been writing poetry for a while now and has been published in three anthologies by Wally Publishing House. Now to our title, Makola. When you hear the word Makola, actually it is a reference to one of the big markets in Accra, Ghana. The poem talks about the people normally found at the markets. As a big market, all kinds of people are found there. Merchants, head porters, truck pushers, ice or chilled water sellers, and generally buyers and sellers. And that is a view of Makola there. A very busy market. Let's take a look at the poem Makola. Head bent, rags all around the upside down pan, picking her nose, shuffling her feet, oblivious to the bustle and the calls of the driver's mates. This morning, she quarrels with the husband. Why wouldn't he understand that her work is very tedious and involving? Why must it always be on his teams at his convenience? Move out of the way, move out of the way, I say, shouts the truck pusher. None cares about his agitation. The sweat runs down his face, tiny rivulets of disappointment and fear. They snake down and glide effortlessly into his dirty t-shirt. His tongue peeps out and licks the beads of sweat on his lip. That young girl with thin arms balances a bowl of sachet water on her head. The runny-nosed baby at her back is supported with a faded ATL cloth. He holds in his hands a battered teddy with an eye missing. The baby whimpers. She tries to soothe him by patting his leg. He refuses to be soothed and gives out a loud yell. Put him to the breast. One woman cancels. I can't, she says. I have no breast milk. Such a beautiful poem by Teresa Enin. Let's take a look at its structure as we look at the poem. This poem is a one stanza poem with 28 lines. It has dialogue in lines 9. Move out of the way. Move out, I say. That's the dialogue and it's said by the card pusher. Also in line 27 and 28, the last but two lines. Put him to the breast, one woman cancels. I can't, she says, I have no breast milk. So we see some dialogue in there. This poem is a free verse poem. It does not have a regular rhyme scheme. So we know from this that Makola is a one stanza poem with 28 lines. It has long and uneven line breaks. There is also enjambment as the meaning of some lines run into others. The poem tells stories of persons in the marketplace and their personal problems. It also looks like a story or a prose as it has some dialogue in the last two lines and line 9. The lines of this poem do not rhyme. Now let's take a look at the characters in the poem. We see a kayaye or a street porter who helps people carry luggages for a fee. She actually has issues with her husband. Also, we are introduced to driver's maids who are calling us for potential passengers. A cart pusher. We see a cart pusher who is agitated as he yells at people to give way for him to pass with his cart. Then a young slim girl who is also a mother selling sachet water. 
we are introduced to a baby boy with runny nose at the back of the sachet water cellar. Then, a concerned woman who advises the young mother to breastfeed her baby. Let's take a look at the line by line analysis. We look at line 1 to 5. The opening line of the poem describes the setting. A description that shows the place is filthy. Rags all around the upside down pan. We see this in line 1. Also, we encounter a woman in the marketplace picking her nose, shuffling her feet, who had quarreled with her husband in the morning. A vivid imagery is presented to us. The woman's head is bent. The woman is unaware of the bustle or the frustration and calls of the driver's mate. She is obviously sitting on the pan that is turned upside down. In line 6 to 8, we realize that her mind is so occupied with something more important than what is going on around her. She doesn't care about the noise made by the driver's mates who are calling out for passengers to board their vehicles. The reason why she looks busy and lost in her thoughts we see in line 5 where we realize that this morning she quarreled with her husband. Line 6 to 8 gives us a hint about further reasons for the quarrel. In fact, her husband always wants to take all decisions without any considerations for her as she does a difficult and challenging job. Now again, our attention is drawn to women in the society who usually will have to combine motherhood and taking care of the home with their respective career or jobs. This can be challenging sometimes, so it isn't a surprise that she looks busy and lost in her thoughts. In lines 9 to 17, we are introduced to the cat pusher who shows his frustration by shouting, move out of the way. The description of how he looks, his dirty t-shirt, shows he is poor and struggles to make ends meet. This is typical of the struggle of most people in the world, especially those who do menial jobs. Again, we see from line 18 to 28 that three characters are introduced. A young girl with thin arms, with a baby who sells sachet water, and a concerned woman who counsels the thin-armed girls to offer her baby breast milk. Now, these lines typically show the struggles of mothers in our society. In a dialogue, the woman shows concern by advising the girl to breastfeed the baby. But her advice cannot be carried out as the girl replies, I can't. Probably, the young girl is a child herself, perhaps a poor teenage mother, whose breast is unable to produce milk, or a malnourished nursing mother struggling to make ends meet. We understand that she is poor because her baby is sick. She has a runny nose and again the cloth used to wrap the baby is described as faded. Makula is such an interesting poem and also a touching one. The mood is that of a busy environment and market. The mood expresses frustration, exhaustion and pain as characters struggle in their various occupations to make a living. Let's take a look at some literary devices that can be seen in the poem Makola. Allusion There is the use of allusion in this poem. The name Makola is actually a reference to one of the big markets in Ghana's capital, Accra. And that is what has been made reference to that particular market. Also, the use of the word ATL. ATL is also actually a textile company which already exists. It is a Kosombo Textiles Limited and reference has been made to this particular textiles company in Ghana. Also, there is the use of imagery. Imagery is the literary term used for language and description that appeals to our five senses. When a writer attempts to describe something so that it appeals to our sense of smell, sight, taste, touch or hearing, he or she has used imagery. So the use of shuffling her feet 
appeals to our sense of hearing as shuffling makes noise when you drag your feet. Again, line 12, we see the sweat runs down his face. Dirty shirt. All this appeals to our sense of sight because when you read this, you begin to picture how his face is full of sweat and how his shirt is dirty. Also, his tongue peeps out and licks the beads of sweat on his lips. Now, again, when you read this, it appeals to your sense of taste as sweat is salty and to think of it being licked appeals to your sense of taste. There is also the use of symbolism. We see rags, dirty t-shirt, thin arms, a faded ATL cloth, a battered teddy. I have no breast milk. All these are symbols of abject poverty, deprivation and frustration in life. And so the use of these words shows us the poverty around, the deprivation and the frustrations these characters are going through. Also, there is the use of dialogue, a conversation. We see that in line 9 and also in the last two lines. For example, put him to breast. One woman cancels. I can't, she says. I have no breast milk. All these um, shows the use of dialogue. Again, there is the use of rhetorical question. Why wouldn't he understand that her work is very tedious and involving? Also, there's been the use of alliteration in line 22. The repetition of the consonant, the initial consonant sound, H. Oh. He holds in his hands. Also, there is the use of onomatopoeia, shuffling her feet. So the word shuffling. Also, there's the use of personification. Sweat runs down his face. We see that in line 12. Tongue peeps out and licks. We see that in line 16. So, sweat and tongue are given human qualities to do things, such as the sweat giving the human attributes run and the tongue giving the human attributes peep. Also, there's the use of metaphor. The sweat that runs down his face. We see in line 12, metaphorically becomes tiny rivulets and tiny rivulets here means small stream of fluid flowing down his face. Let's take a look at some themes that we can deduce from the poem Makola. Life is a struggle. The poem focuses on the menial jobs people do to earn a living. Life is like the marketplace. Everybody goes about their individual businesses and it isn't easy at all. And we see that through the struggles of the cart pusher and the thin armed girl who sells sachet water. Also, the personal and domestic struggles people go through affect their work. People go through difficulties in an attempt to earn a living with everybody minding their own business. So if you look at the struggles that the characters go through, in the end you see that they are personal. The need to take our sanitation serious as a country. We see that in line one because the marketplace is so filthy. You see the use of rags all around. And so this can be one of the things that we can deduce from the poem Makola. Also, the need for husbands to consider the opinions of their wives in decision making, especially in patriarchy cultures. The head potter in the market was troubled due to issues concerning decision making in the home. Also, women go through various challenges as they combine the hectic job of motherhood and their various careers and jobs. An example of this could also be the thin arm girl who has to come to the market and sell sachet water in order to take care of her baby. Let's take a look at some likely examination questions. I hope you try out these questions to see how best you've been able to understand the poem Makola.
let's do a quick recap. We've looked at the title Makola as a marketplace in Ghana's capital Accra. We've taken a look at the structure of the poem. It is a one stanza poem. We've looked at the diction. It uses very simple language. It has some dialogue in there. It's analysis. It looks at the various characters and their various struggles in order to make a living. We've looked at some literary devices in the poem and its themes. Some other lessons from Anissa the Pedagog channel. I hope this lesson was useful to you. Please put in your comments and questions and I'll respond to them. Do like, share and subscribe to this channel. Until I come your way again, keep learning and be the best version of yourself.